Hey guys, what's up? It's Wolf Airsoft Gaming, and today we're doing part one of how to build a DMR. So this is the first episode of the How to Build a DMR series, where I cover all the topics of a designated marksman rifle in Airsoft. This also applies to semi-automatic sniper rifles, um, basically range and accuracy in Airsoft. We're going to cover a little bit of that here and go in depth into other videos with it. Uh, so on the table I have two examples I'll get into later as far as the internal part list and build. Uh, this is a Tokyo Marui HK417. This is a Tokyo Marui PSG1. Both have been 100% completely modified, most of the uh, inside and out. Um, and they perform absolutely excellently. We will cover those uh, in the last episode as far as detailed part list for those. Uh, these are kind of my general examples of what we're going to be coming over and I guess kind of the success stories. So to start off this DMR build series, I want to give you guys some background about myself. For the past eight years, I've been teching and playing Airsoft, specifically specializing in long range precision systems in Airsoft, whether it be sniper rifles, DMRs. Uh, I've always had the fascination of how far can we push a 6mm plastic BB and how accurately can we get it as far as possible. So over my 8 years uh, I've had some extremely su successful builds. Um, I've had DMRs shoot 275-300 feet accurately hitting man sized targets every single time. Um, I, I've done so much research and so many builds I've realized what doesn't work, what actually works. Um, and brought some practical use into this very theoretical problem of what are the physics of airsoft, how do we counteract that, and how can we put this tiny ball of plastic into an enemy 300 feet away. So, yeah, I'm ex extremely passionate about this topic, and I've done a lot of research. To kind of show off some two prize builds here, uh, this is extremely rare, this is a collector's item, it was uh, produced I believe in the 90s. Um, parts for this are nearly impossible to find. Uh, it also performs extremely well. All system internals, uh, custom MK uh, Chimera mod for the MOSFET, a bunch of other crazy stuff in there. Um, this one is shooting at 3.6 joules sniper regulation, hitting man sized targets 9 out of 10 times at 300 feet with 0.48 gram BB BLS BBs. Um, it is an antique, but it performs extremely well, and this was my very first successful build after seven years of airsoft teching and specializing in this DMR stuff. Um, it's more of a sniper than a DMR. Uh, this is a True Blood DMR, though, going in at 1.88 joules with point, uh, technically 1.87.01 joule below the limit with 0 .40 grand BLS BBs. This is hitting man-sized targets nine out of ten times at 250 feet. Uh, essentially, at the local field I go to, if you can see it, it's dead. Um, in Milsim events, this is still a wonderful platform. Um, get, coming in at 250, you know, effective shots even at 275 feet, um, it's an excellent build. It's also a Marui NGRS, so you, both of these have blowback as well, uh, because I really like feedback. Um, this is also why I use AH, or AEGs instead of HPA. So, with that being said, let's get into the video. So, qualities that make up a DMR. The first thing, uh, the first two categories are accuracy and range. That's what sets these guys apart from the rest. That's why you sacrifice fully automatic fire in some instances for semi. Um, that's also why you get a minimum engagement distance. All of that is for the extra accuracy and range that these guys provide. If your DMR performs like a rifle, you, it should not be a DMR, it's a rifle. Um, so, accuracy and range. Which is more important? Well, uh, by far, absolutely, accuracy is far more important than range in every instance of a precision rifle system. Let me tell you why. I've had builds that can shoot 300 feet, but can't hit the broadside of a barn. If you cannot hit your target, your gun is worthless. I don't care if your gun can shoot 500 feet. If you can't hit what you're shooting at, it is absolutely pointless. Um, so accuracy, very important. 
it would be much more effective to have a rifle that's effective, can hit every single time, 100 out of 100, a man-sized target at 150 feet, than a rifle that can hit maybe 2 out of 10 shots at 250 feet. The 150 feet, 100 out of 100 times, is much more important and valuable on the field. Being able to hit your target the first time is extremely important. That, and that also, you know, contributing to that is accurate, consistent flight paths, uh, resistance to gravity, um, hop up, R hop, but we're going to go all of that in later episodes. So now that we've covered accuracy, range is going to be the next best thing. As long as there's going to be two people on the battlefield, there's always going to be someone that outranges someone else. And you want to be the guy with the longer range, obviously. So, um, yeah, so now that we've covered that, uh, what else really composes a DMR? Well, you'll notice it on both of these guys right here. Scopes. Now, scopes obviously are not necessary. These are modern technological advances uh, that really just give better... Um, eyesight to the shooter. Uh, this is not to say that you can't hit a target at 200 feet without a scope, obviously. I mean, you can shoot out to about 300 yards with iron sights, no problem. Uh, but the uh, scopes here in Airsoft are specifically useful so you can see your BB hit the target or see your BB flight path in general. This is why it's also very important to use nothing but white BBs so that you can see the BBs against the background. This is key, very important, because you want to be able to adjust your trajectory and whatever, whether it be up, down, left, or right, windage elevation, uh, depending on what your gun is shooting. Of course, having your uh, scope zeroed in is a lot better, but again, in airsoft there is wind, there is elevation changes, there is range changes, and there's not too much you can do about that. I use scopes, it is not mandatory. Uh, we'll, we'll get into Milsim regulations later, but for the most part, as far as a fundamental point of a DMR and airsoft, scopes are not required. So now we'll get into what systems are ideal. Well, uh, there's a surprisingly an increasing amount of platforms on the airsoft market. I just reviewed one called the GBLS GDR DAS or DAS GDR15. It is its own thing. It's its own system. Um, but yeah, just as an example. Uh, so the three most popular, uh, oh, I guess we can throw on the fourth, uh, you have both of these, which are AEG, electric automatic guns. Then you have uh, spring, which is mostly sniper rifles. This isn't, this series is, if you're going to spring, this is the wrong guide for you, to, to a degree. I'm talking about electric guns. Spring guns are fairly, very simple on their own. Um, you have the other two categories which are both gas, yes, air is gas, HPA and GG, GBBR. So if you have a gas blowback rifle, um, we'll touch up on that, and then HPA. So which is the best platform? Very hard to say. Ideally, according to physics, uh, HPA, and I'm really hesitant to say that because all of my successful builds have been AEG, um, but theoretically, and there's been a lot of success with HPA, of course, um, because there's almost no moving parts, and because it's so consistent, HPA is by far the easiest and definitely the most quiet system to install into an airsoft replica to make a DMR. So you get consistency extremely easy, and you get silent shots. If you get the Wolverine Reaper, I can't speak for other closed bolt systems, um, fixed volume closed bolt that is, the Wolverine Reaper is dead quiet, uncomfortably quiet. I hated it because of how quiet it was. Granted, if you were standing next to me, you could not hear the shot go off. So if that's what you're looking for, check out the Wolverine Bolt. Uh, of course, with HPA systems, closed bolt systems, uh, due to their operation, it's going to be more ideal for consistent shots. Anything like the Polar Star Fusion Engine, Polar Star F2, Wolverine Reaper, Redline, um, their HPA engine, the N7, and I think that's about it. The SDIK is kind of a different animal, but um, yeah, those are going to be the best HPA systems. 
by far my personal favorite, the Polar Star Fusion Engine. The F2 is also a very viable system. Uh, both of them, all of the men, uh, systems I mentioned are closed bolt. The F2 and the Fusion Engine are the only two that are dual solenoid. Um, so we can kind of get into that in another video if you guys want further explanation. But so yes, a very close second. What I used, what I've gotten the best results with is AEG. Now theoretically these are not the most ideal because of the amount of moving parts and the amount of chance that you can have that uh, compression won't be as accurate as or more consistent as HPA. I have gotten 1 to 2 FPS deviancy on both of these guns and they are extremely, extremely consistent. Incredibly consistent. So is AEG viable for DMR platform? Absolutely. I think you'd be crazy if anyone ever said otherwise. Um, so that covers AEGs. Gas blowback rifles. Uh, don't do it. Uh, don't make a GGBR DMR. It's very difficult to do. Um, of course, if you're experienced, if you want to challenge, if you want that tough recoil, you know, go for it. Granted, you will be having to HPA tap all of your magazines and do other internal modifications. Your gun will wear down much faster than any other platform, and you're more prone to, one, the recoil throwing off shots, leading to worse shot-to-shot -shot consistency. Um, if you're using HPA, you're not, you, you, know, you don't have the cooldown effect or anything like that. And that solves the, 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 the issue that makes them unusable for DMR platform stock is their consistency issues. Accuracy and everything can be addressed later, um, but as a general rule of thumb, do not use gas blowbacks as a DMR platform. Uh, now I will say it is very, very possible to do. If you check out the um, KCO2 Facebook group, there's a lot of success with that. I'm definitely not saying it's impossible. There's a lot of people that have created wonderful gas pullback rifle builds that have been very accurate. Um, they're the properties of gas, um, and I would call it the pop -it dwell of pop -it dwell quote unquote of uh, the GGBR system is excellent. You know, there's properties of that that you won't be getting in uh, AEGs, but so keep that in mind. General overview of these systems. And the last note on this general overview for this DMR series is the lighter the better. If you can find a platform that's very light and that works, you're on a good track. So this is kind of the broadest sense. Um, everything that kind of, you know, the theoretical component. Now we're going to get into more of the limitations and specifics that'll decrease and narrow down the scope until you find the build and exactly what else you need to do. So this is a very general overview and in later episodes we're going to narrow it down until you're able to find exactly what platform that you want. So yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this overview video. Stay tuned for the next episode where we go over milsim regulations and other limitations for building DMRs. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys really like this series. I'm absolutely stoked about it. I can't wait to put out more videos um, about DMRs. It's my passion. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.